we have this beautiful story in the book of Ruth. It's composed of two women, Naomi and Ruth, who were blessed by God through a time of great suffering and loss. And this story is set in a pivotal time, at the end of a period of the book of Judges. And what Ruth does has immense consequence for the entire history of the Bible and thus the history of the world. This is a book with a message. It's a message about God who remains completely out of sight through the whole book, but is actively working through tragic circumstances to produce some outstanding outcomes. It's also a story about Israel struggling under famine during a period of chaos and curse in the book of Judges. These Israelites discover through simple acts of love and trust and commitment and generosity, they discover their true identity and destiny. The three main characters are Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz. And each of these express what is best about God's people, even in the worst of circumstances. These three demonstrate how the God of Israel can use such people to accomplish great things from one generation to the next. There's this Moabite girl, Ruth, who is drawn by love to her mother-in-law, Naomi, after their husbands die. Ruth first becomes a Jew, adopting Naomi's God and homeland as her own, and then through the good offices of Boaz, becomes grandmother, get this, to King David. She becomes the matriarch of a royal line that will bear the Messiah himself, Jesus of Nazareth. In fact, Ruth is named in Jesus' genealogy in the Gospel of Matthew. Now, reading this story of Luke, any follower of God can see how their own individual life, your life and mine, our decisions, have meaning and importance in God's great drama to save the world. Each of us have a role to play in that story. Okay, so now we start reading Paul's first epistle to Timothy. Now, I'm not sure why we're reading 1 Timothy after 2 Timothy, right? So we had 2 Timothy last week, but there it is. It's the daily office. We remember how Paul assured us at the end of 2 Timothy that all Scripture is inspired by God and infallible. Well, it is infallible, but the lectionary committee isn't. So we're reading 1 Timothy after 2 Timothy. Anyway, Paul's letters to Timothy and to Titus also, um, we see him passing the torch to the next generation of leaders in the church. In these books, both books, Paul offers instructions to strengthen Timothy's leadership there in Ephesus and outward from there to the surrounding cities and that whole region of, of Western Turkey. Now, Paul had raised Timothy up to a role of oversight, overseeing the pastors, uh, responsible for ensuring that they teach and live in ways that are consistent with the gospel, basically providing uh, quality control uh, for the church's leaders. Timothy was also responsible for ordering the worship and pastoral policies of the church. And you can see that very clearly in chapters 2 and 3 and 4. And Timothy's role is identical with what would later be called in a generation bishop, a bishop in the church. That's what Timothy is in function, if not by name. And soon there developed in the church in the century that followed Timothy a succession of bishops as one generation passed the torch to the next, just as Paul had passed the torch to Timothy. Each uh, carefully selecting and preparing their leaders, their successors, who would persuasively present the orthodox teaching of the gospel and maintain good order and discipline in the churches. All of this effort was made necessary because of prevalent bad ideas and false teachers in the church seeking to spread counterfeit versions of the gospel, uh, twisting the teaching about Christian lifestyle. Christian believing. 
And that's always the case in the church, in every generation, even our own, which is why every book of the New Testament was written to address such issues. In every generation, the church has to deal with its own false teacher, teachers and counterfeit messages. It'd be interesting sometime to analyze today's churches and to try to identify our own false teachers and counterfeit messages. So take note as you read how Paul describes the effects of these false teachers and their teaching. He's very alert. Paul, view, uh, Paul views this struggle as a battle, as an ongoing war, and he very strongly tar charges Timothy and us to view it that way too, to, to see the stakes of this struggle. And so I hope that by reading Paul's epistles here, you will be more alert to false teaching uh, in today's churches. Paul and Timothy faced the immense challenge of assimilating lots and lots of pagans and Jews into sustainable Christian communities and doing it on the fly. So. They had this catastrophic success where you have all these people uh, being baptized, coming into the church, and, and they face a huge challenge both internally and externally of so, so many problems, always something cropping up to challenge the leaders of the church.